you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. This is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. In the news tonight, busy calendar for MPs in new parliament session. Education Ministry dedicate Friday to suicide awareness and DPP to consolidate all sedition related files. More than 60 new laws are expected to be introduced along with several acts up for review in the new parliament session. President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau yesterday in his parliament address elaborated on what is going to be an extensive legislative program over the coming months. Maggie Boyle tells us more. The legislative program for parliamentarians is guaranteed to keep MPs busy. Some of these new laws will be in the following areas. Code of conduct for public office holders, freedom of information, national switch, public health protection, consumer protection, security credit transactions, disabled persons, child care and protection. In addition, there will be a substantial review of various existing laws. These will include the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act. Public Enterprises Act, Public Service Act, Land Transport Act, Police Act, Mining Act, Consumer Credit Act and Financial Management Act. First up, though, Parliament is scheduled to meet from next week to respond to the President's address. In October, the House will appoint a new President and a month later, it's the National Budget Announcement. As you heard in the speech, there will be um, a lot more legislation, so that'll be interesting because that'll actually uh, help the, uh, the members of parliament to put what they have learnt into practice in terms of scrutiny of the government, scrutiny of legislations and scrutiny of whatever reports are brought before the committees. Parliament will next sit from the 21st to the 25th of October. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. National Federation Party leader Biman Prasad says the NFP stands by the rule of law. In his presidential address yesterday, Professor Prasad says, sorry, it says the NFP has always held this belief. We have always stood by the rule of law uh, and uh, that is our philosophy. That is our principle. Uh, we have never uh, in the history of this country as a political party uh, supported uh, any uh, activity which causes instability in the country. A 40-year-old man appeared in the Rakiraki Magistrates Court today for allegedly attempting to steal the ashes of the late Simran Singh. Vijay Prasad allegedly snuck into the Rakiraki Lalmiti Cemetery on Sunday evening after Simran had been cremated and tried to make off with ashes and bones from the funeral. He's been charged with common nuisance and criminal trespass. Police prosecutor Nilesh Kumar objected to bail, saying it's for Prasad's own safety and because of the huge public interest surrounding the case. He's been remanded at the Natambua Correction Centre until the 30th of September. The Education Ministry has designated Friday as a day of awareness on suicides for all 900 schools. Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says students need to be more involved and the ministry is being proactive. Julie Vatwaliwali with the story. There will be no classes on Friday. Instead, teachers and students will spend the day talking about suicide and how to prevent self-harm. Basically, students will stand up and talk about why suicide is a complete no-no. Uh, there'll be activities, uh, there'll be role plays, there'll be uh, uh, poems read out by students themselves. 
The ministry wants to collaborate with parents, teachers, school committees, community and religious leaders for guidance and nurturing of students. The students have been informed, today they will be informed by the teachers that Friday they need to prepare about discussing how suicide destroys communities, destroys societies, destroys uh, families and why uh, it is a complete no-no uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, them uh, engaging in or getting uh, in groups and, and, and kind of encouraging others to uh, commit suicide. As part of this campaign, students, teachers and even staff from the Education Ministry will take a pledge that they will value life, will never attempt self-harm. Children will also be encouraged to overcome any reluctance to share their problems or isolate themselves from the community. Julie Watuwaliwali, FBC News. New Zealand Prime Minister John Key says it's time for Fiji and New Zealand to forget about the past and move forward. Key met with Fijian Foreign Minister Ratu Inoke Kumbombola during the Pacific Island Forum in Papua New Guinea last week. He told New Zealand-based Radio Tarana that he had a good chat with Ratu Inoke and talks are underway for an official trip to Fiji. Our issue hasn't been with Frank Bainamarama per se. It's, it's historically been with the fact that, that there wasn't democracy. Now you know, he's addressed that. So we've moved, we've kind of moved on, if you like. Um, so I think they're, they're doing pretty well. I mean, I, I don't get to measure it every day, um, but we want them to do well because it's a, you know it's a big economy in the region and, and a lot of New Zealand investment and a lot of New Zealanders go there. Key says other ministers at the PIF prefer that Mbani Marama also attend the Forum Leaders Summit. The Office of the Director of Public Prosecution is likely to consolidate all 44 cases of sedition and urging political violence. The DPP has informed the Lautoka High Court today that it will finalize the application by the next court hearing. Madhu Mbolaitamana with this report. DPP lawyer Semim Bambitu informed the Lautoka High Court this morning that it is considering the consolidation of all 44 cases of sedition and inciting political violence. The 44 cases have been transferred from the Tavua and Rakiraki Magistrates Court over the past month following extensive police investigations into the alleged use of weapons and military-style training in the interior of Ra. Lotoka lawyer Simoni Nadolawa, Timothy Nangata and Peter Vakatawa, who are charged with the same offence, appeared before Justice Aludge today. Also appearing for the same charge, but on a different case, were Apmilekiwe Lomo and Chosua Navaluvo. Defence lawyer Mark Anthony told the court that they will also be responding to the proposed consolidation of cases at the next court hearing. Justice Aludge has set a date for hearing on the 22nd of this month where the DPP is to finalise the consolidation of these files. The DPP is also to submit its final disclosures to the defence on the day. Madhim Boletamana, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, fisheries officers learn about policing marine resources. Lead Defence Counsel for Ethan Kai, who imported $30 million worth of heroin, has asked the court to consider that the Australian national is the sole breadwinner for his young family and also looks after his ailing mother. In his mitigation, John Peluso said his client has served in Buddhist temples in Southeast Asia, helping the needy and positively contributing to his religion and community. He asked the court to consider that his client has two children, a 15-year-old son who had come from Australia to be in court this afternoon, and a one-year, one-month-old baby who is still with her mother in Australia. Judge Justice Tushara Rajasinghe will sentence Kai at 11.30 a.m. tomorrow. The Vodafone-led consortium of sponsors for the Fiji Rugby Union are paying for the Prime Minister and President of FRU, Varengembaini Marama, to attend the Rugby World Cup in England. 
Vodafone Fiji chairman Ajit Korogoda says the decision was made after World Rugby announced it was not in a position to sponsor the Prime Minister. He says Mbani Marama has done a lot for the development of rugby and his presence will provide a psychological boost for players. The PM is expected to hand out the jerseys to the Fijian team and speak to them before they run onto the field. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority and the HFC Bank signed a Memorandum of Understanding, allowing the local bank to facilitate customs payments. It will also see an easier system for all importers. This is the first ever deal of its kind. Fiji Revenue and Customs Chief Executive Officer Chitoko Tikolevu and HFC Bank CEO Isikeli Tikonduandua signed off on the deal this afternoon. So to them, it means essentially that uh, the clearance of goods will be done on a very, very uh, uh, accelerated basis, very quick in terms of uh, delivery of goods to their premises. Importers can make customs payments at HFC Bank. Once the green light is given by the bank, customs officers clear consignments within 24 hours. Thurka will also guide importers to HFC Bank's internet banking facility as an easy alternative to standing in line at Thurka offices. When um, importers um, do their payments, the problem they used to have is how soon can they clear their goods. And uh, through this uh, collaboration, one thing is, uh, is definite is that once they do their payment, they go from here direct to uh, the port and clear their goods. So that's why we're calling it the real-time customs clearance. Supreme Fuel has 12 service stations in Fiji, has become the first local company to trial the new system. It's a good initiative for win-win base for both. Reason we can save time and money. The service is being rolled out in Suva first and will progressively be introduced in other ports. Talks have begun on a coastal fisheries management division to better respond to emerging issues within the fisheries sector. Run by the fisheries ministry, the unit will police overfishing, unlicensed fishing and illegal catches. Ali Kimbia has more. These are the first batch of fisheries officers to be trained on how to address specific issues on coastal and inshore fishing. The regulatory role is the administration and management of Fiji laws and in relation to this workshop, the Fisheries Act and its subsidiary legislations. Whilst you strive to enhance your skills in MCS activities, it is important to understand the links between why and who we are managing our coastal fisheries resources for. PS Fisheries in Okewenigolo also reminded them of their role in saving the people and protecting traditional fishing grounds. Ladies and gentlemen, your role and effectiveness as Fiji fisheries managers not only contributes to the economy of our beloved country, but makes a difference to the daily livelihoods of our people. Pet Southern, a fisheries representative from New Zealand, says it's vital to protect our fisheries for future generations. It's a part of fisheries management and an important part. And it's sometimes a part that's often overlooked a little bit, not just in the Pacific, but right around the world. Sometimes MCS and enforcement is viewed as a nice to have rather than a must have. These fisheries officers were chosen from different parts of Fiji where people rely heavily on marine resources for food and as a source of income. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Prosthetic breasts are now available for women who've had a mastectomy due to breast cancer. Australian women who suffer from cancer have made a donation to Fiji's health ministry to assist Fijian women. Savaratambur with more. It's a silicon material used by women who've undergone surgery to have their breasts removed. Heather Tate and her daughter Sarah are behind the initiative. At the moment, we're uh, we're not sure how many women are coming into this mission, this uh, in Suva. So we've only been able to give them one bra each. But when we're finishing tomorrow, any leftover bras that the nurses will distribute to the ladies who we've already fitted. Breast cancer patients were thankful to the Tate family and other donors, saying the prosthetics allow women to live with dignity. I like to encourage all ladies too, women out there, uh, to come and use this initiative as uh, it is free of charge. I want all the women who suffered from breast cancer to come to the wellness center like I did. 
In Fiji, breast cancer remains amongst the top two types of cancer in females. 179 women had breast cancer. Statistics indicate what is calling for an urgent need for quality cancer control. There is strong urgency to develop effective and affordable approaches to improve early detection and diagnosis. The high mortality rate for breast cancer patients is mostly due to late detection and diagnosis since many women don't show up to hospitals or clinics until it's too late. Sabera Tabua, FBC News. We turn to sports now. Here's Jamie. Thank you, Jackie, and good evening. Coming up, senior players in the Flying Fijians are making life easier for team management. And race for number one snooker rank narrows down to four. Details up. राब को सपने तो जरूर आए होंगे ये सपने क्या कहते हैं और बस थोड़ी ही देर में देखेंगे कि आज आपकी किस्मत के सितारे करते हैं क्या इशारे नई आशाएं और हौसले भरी सुबह की सुहानी शुरुआत करें हमारे साथ मैं आपकी हम सफर मोहिनी और मैं दीप्ति सोमवार से शुक्रवार सुबह छह से नौ तक रेडियो फीची जो देश की धड़कन आरोप Senior players in the Vodafone Flying Fijians have been praised for their leadership. With a vast number of players making a return to World Cup competition, team management is very pleased with the knowledge and firepower they add to the squad. Interesting with more from London. Reports and updates of the Rugby World Cup was proudly presented by Vodafone, power to you, and Airports Fiji Limited, creating new experiences. Fiji's gateway to the world, in association with FMF, the right choice, Total, you know where to turn. And Sun Insurance, for Fijians, by Fijians. Supported by Fiji Airways, Dulux, Island Chill, Comfort Home Furnishing, and Central Rental. Experience is something which is not lacking in this flying Fijians team, and this has made the task for the coaching staff easier. Really, really good in, in the camp that the you know the more experienced campaigners are really taking the younger, lesser experienced boys under their wing and you know and they're acting as mentors. There are a couple of players who are featuring in their third World Cup, while some others are making it a double. However, there are still some who will be making their bow at the biggest rugby showpiece. This, you know, this week the pressure, the pressure will build, and and you know it's just to help them. Keep focused on, on their tasks, and, and, and that's, that's how you overcome the pressure by focusing on the things that you need to do and not getting too um, distracted by all, all the other factors. With the eyes of the rugby world on the two teams, England is using all the tricks in the book to reverse the pressure situation, which the Fijians are aware of. Uh, probably our results in recent times have, have made people turn and look. But deep down, England think they're going to get us at home, opening game, Fiji no chance. So I think there's a little bit of lip service, but we, we have to take real pride on um, preparing well and giving them, giving them a real good shot. So it was a cold and rainy day in London as the team went through another set of training run. As the countdown continues, the English have named their team and now it's left to the Fijians to counter that. The coaching staff says it does not worry them who the English have named because at the end of the day it's the Fijians who will be playing for the nation and for that white jersey that they will don. Interesting FBC Sports. With only four days remaining for the Rugby World Cup opening, the flying Fijians were hard at training again today, perfecting their every move. And the task didn't get any easier with England naming a powerful team last night to take on Fiji. Interesting again. All eyes, young and old, is on Fiji and what will they bring to Twickenham on Saturday, knowing too well the Fijians are out for an upset. It's a massive game, a big game for us and... Uh... It's only four days left and uh, the boys are pretty, pretty well and looking forward for it. It was never going to be easy from the day the pools were drawn, but to play at the World Cup means getting ready to mix it with the best. We know that uh, England is a big team. Uh, we respect them and uh, 
they have like everything and uh, but for some of the boys uh, this uh, we play uh, our Japanese youth rugby here then uh, it's not, not uh, new for us and uh, it's gonna be a big challenge for us. Veteran Sunia Koto has seen it all in his time and now in his third World Cup campaign knows only too well that the odds are stacked against Fiji. We've been working on, uh, on the, for the past uh, uh, last week and uh, today again I guess for the next uh, three days we'll be working on brushing up all, uh, all our game plans for, for, for Friday. While some might not even be interested in what is looming, there are others who are keen to learn more about the Fijians. After all, it will be no child's play when a nation takes on its former ruler, only this time ready to turn the tables. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Tourism Fiji office in London is capitalizing on the Rugby World Cup hype. The organization will also be at Twickenham on game day to make the most of the 82,000 spectators by promoting Fiji as a tourist destination. Tourism Fiji says rugby fits in perfectly with its sports tourism plans. We cannot miss an opportunity like this. It's such a magnificent chance to promote Fiji as a destination and to a way of really bringing in the Fiji community that live in the UK. So we're going to be uh, hosting a Fiji bure uh, within the fan zones that have been designated by the uh, public areas where people can watch the match on giant screens with food and drink and, and fun. The Australian rugby side has also arrived in England. The team includes two Fijians featuring in the back line. Winger Henry Spate and centre Tevita Kurindrani are, are key players for the Wallabies on its hunt for a third world title. Australia will face the flying Fijians at 3.45 a.m. next Wednesday. And you can watch that match as well as the entire Rugby World Cup live on FBC TV. Hawaiian surfer Lori Park has shown interest in assisting locals with stand-up paddleboard race competitions. The professional athlete says Fijians have a gift for sensing strong currents and it's about time to put it to good use. Josephine Avula with the details. Having competed in a number of stand-up paddleboard races here and making a comeback in Musket Cove after two years, Lori Park competes out of passion for the sport. I surf a lot um, for fun and sometimes I participate in competitions and sometimes I do races and paddling and I've been paddling for quite a while. Uh, we knew when we got here there was a race last week and so we decided we we're all going to do the race because we love paddle racing so we just signed up. Park won the women's category with a time of 2 hours and 53 minutes. She says she is willing to assist locals in becoming professionals. I'll try to help somehow. I've got some extra boards. <laughs> I do. I keep them. I do. If you guys have any ideas, just contact Nemo too. The winner of the men's category, 20-year-old Connor Baxter, says it was an honor to be part of the race. I decided to grab a board and a paddle and uh, join the race and have a good day. And conditions were really fun, good downwind, and, uh, you know, came on top today, so I was super stoked. The week-long Fiji's legendary regatta race will end tomorrow. Josephine Navula, FBC Sports. The Fiji Bandag fourth and final snooker ranking tournament will be held this weekend. At this stage, there are four players in the running for the number one spot. Current number one player Jitendra Prasad is tipped to retain his ranking. The three-day tournament begins this Friday at the Lautoka Club. That's it from Sports Tonight. It's back to Jackie now with business. RB Patel Group now has the Pacific's largest solar powered supermarket at RB Centerpoint in Asino, Fiji. The installation is expected to deliver up to 160 clean, reliable energy every year. It's the third project between RB Patel and Solar Energy Company, which has already installed solar panels at Jet Point in Nandi and West Point in Lautoka. RB Patel Group Limited Chief Operating Officer Deepak Rathod says the introduction of renewable energy is part of their strategic operating plan.
Cloudy periods and brief isolated showers affected the country today. A trough of low pressure lies slow moving over the southern parts of Tuvalu and Wallace. A cool east to southeast wind flow prevails over the southwest Pacific region. In temperatures, it was a cool day in all divisions. Suva and Savo Savo recorded a temperature of 26 degrees, Nandi and Bao on 28 degrees, while Atoka was on 27 degrees. Tomorrow is cloudy periods with brief showers over the interior, southern and eastern parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers. Outlook for Thursday is some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands fine elsewhere. The main points again. Parliament Secretariat expects a busy year ahead with 60 new bills expected before the House. 40-year-old Raki Raki man appears in court for allegedly stealing the ashes of the late Simran Singh and New Zealand Prime Minister John Key planning on official visit to Fiji. Our poll question for the week, we're asking, can we beat England in the Rugby World Cup opener? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spade. Good night.